We're playing drawception. All right, let's draw. I'm gonna go up and we're gonna find a game that sparks some sort of image in our mind. Let's get up a little reference for this. And I think it's a good idea to have a go at this one. I've never really done any bird pictures before, so here's a chance to try something new, which is always a good idea in drawception. We're going to just sort of replicate this background here, this nice blurred background. Just create some bokeh, as it were. And this doesn't have to be anything really specific. We're getting something, we'll just add a bit of contrast to the bird itself. And looking at these colours, maybe we want something, oh, I don't know, a bit more pink, which I doubt we'll really be using. We'll just create a bit of an effect here with this light blue and this pink. Let's not waste the blue we've used. All right, so we'll let that be whatever it wants to be, and then go on to the bird. Now I think we're going to start with an orange base for the bird. We could even start with a red. I'm going to go with an orange though. We're just going to do the general shape of the bird. We want to do it quite large here. This will be its head. That to me looks like a, an alright start. And then we're going to sort of do its body and see how that goes down from it. That might even be a bit much. I think we don't want to go out too far looking at our reference we've got there. References are a good way, well, you can probably tell exactly what references are good for. And as long as we're not tracing, it's perfectly fine to use a reference in drawception. I'm gonna go down like that. That'll be the back of the bird's body. It's a very sleepy macaw, so we've got to find a way to indicate that somehow. All right, so now we're going to work on this yellow part of the bird. I think I'm going to go down to a smaller brush size. We don't have to be too specific with how we do this, because of course, a macaw has feathers. We can show those off a little bit. Just with a bit of a, 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 a bit of roughness in our, in our strokes, which will show those feathers off. All right, now I think we're gonna fill in a bit of this wing here, if you can see that. So I'm gonna go up to this big brush size and I'm going to just do a rough sketch of where the wing is gonna be. And then I'm going to go down to a smaller brush size. I'm just going to do a bit of an outline for it. Then I'm going to do a texture, a bit of a feather texture. This will just... give us a bit more of that bird look. Maybe we can go down to a, or up, depending on your perspective, to a darker pencil. That's really all we need to do. 
Uh, maybe we can go back to a light grey. Just have a bit of more, a bit more texture there. Just some lines. All right. Um. Then we might go and do this other wing here. This is going to just be just a little bit of this blue. Just to show this other wing off a little. And we'll do a little contour it a bit with this finer pencil. Nice. Then of course we might add a bit of a extra detail just to show it off. Nice. Now I think it's really time to focus on this face. <coughs> Excuse me. To focus on the face. We're going to start by doing a rough outline of the face. This, a lot of it will be covered up by other colours. So we don't need to be too specific. In fact, it might be worth just going a bit outside of what we're expecting to draw in. Because that way we can go over it and we won't have to fill in anymore. And then we're going to, uh, rather than really having the uh, references expression there, we're just going to fill in these little bits of pattern and then we're going to maybe have him going to sleep a little bit. There. His eyes are nice and closed because he's very sleepy. Maybe fill in a bit more of this pattern around the face. Do that nostril there. And then I want really to go for this beak. And he's going to be yawning, so he's going to be a bit wider open than it is in the that picture. That, to me, looks like a nice big yawn. I'll go in here, just clean up this, oops, just go down to a smaller brush size, just clean up this a little better. All right, we don't have a lot of time left, so I'm not going to really go more specific than that, but I will do a bit of an outline here. around the beak just to differentiate it all right and now i think it's a good idea to go over these feathers at the top of the head maybe a light green or even a yellow at the front here I think we need to, uh, once we've done that, maybe a bit of green to blend them. I think we need to go in and just give his eye a bit more room. There we go. Now in our last minute, I want to add a bit of texture. Maybe we'll grab some white. We'll just add some texture where the feathers are. Nice. We'll go down here. We'll show some of those feathers off. He's a very proud bird. He wants to show himself off to us. All right. Nice. And then I think I'm going to 
just color this face in a little better. Just show his bird, his birdiness to us. And then just have a bit of darkness there. All right. A very sleepy macaw. And, you know, looking at this, it's not the best picture of a bird. <laughs> but you know what? It's my first try at this kind of a picture. I'm pretty pleased with the results, all things considered. There's certainly stuff we could have done better. Uh, we could have replicated our reference a bit closer, although it's always good to use your imagination and draw -ception. It's what it's all about. So I reckon we'll go on to the next drawings. But uh, well, this is an interesting idea. Infinite cherries fall from cake, birds feast, in black and white. So this could be an interesting thing to draw. All right, I'll just get a cake reference here. A cherry cake. I reckon something like this is what we're looking for. We're gonna start with the top of the cake. We'll have the cake quite high up because the birds are going to be feasting from those cherries that are falling off. We'll just do the indication of some cherries on top of the cake. Then before we do anything crazy, we're just going to do the rest of the cake. Maybe we'll give it some layers. All right, and then we'll have some icing dripping down. Nice. Then I think we want to fill out these cherries a little. We want somehow there to be streams of cherries falling off. So we'll have cherries right at the edge as well. We'll give those little stalks, little stems. Then I think we're going to do just a whole lot of cherries falling down. Maybe they're falling into a big pile down here. So I'll just do the rough outline of the pile. We can go in in a bit to a more specific edge. What's the cake being held up with? That's a good question. Maybe it's flying. I'm just going to add some little, uh, I don't know, air markers to show that it's going up for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> and we'll just continue doing these little cherries falling down. And then we'll give them some stems. And I reckon that we should go in a bit closer, give, some, give them some little highlights. Our light source will be coming from up here, so they'll all reflect the light to show that. Nice. All right. Also on here. Then we're going to go down here, 
Nope, not with the not with the white without black. And just fill in the top of this so that we can tell that these this is a mound of these cherries. Alright, nice. Just do that for the whole thing. We don't even really need to be specific. We can do just this circle itself. That works a little faster. Of course we might want a bigger one every so often. I just want a rough pattern. Of course, we got a whole bunch of little round things, especially with the stems. They're going to create some interesting patterns on the ground, aren't they? Yes, nice. We'll just have a bunch of stems coming up. All right, nice. And then we've got chuck in some birds feasting. And I think we're just going to do some nice bird silhouettes. Well, how about some crows? All right, we've got some crows here that we can use as a reference. We'll go in nice and close. Not there. <laughs> On here. And we'll... Uh, just put in, oh, maybe we want a crow eating. Not eating, with, uh, typing one-handed. <laughs> All right, so we'll do something like that. You know what, we're not really gonna go specific with the shape of the bird. We can be pretty general with how we do that. And then just drawing here. Then maybe his beak is open and he's going to... He's about to pick up a cherry in his beak. Nice. I'm going to do his little legs. All right. Maybe he's got a foot here. All right, nice. We'll do another one or two of those birds. And just check the time. We've got plenty of time. All right. Maybe this one already has a chair in his mouth. We'll just do the tail. We'll do his little head. Just sort of transitions into the body. Nice. And we maybe we can show off his wing a little bit. Maybe it's just coming up from there. And the same with this guy. All right. I'll have two legs thicker into the leg there. And then maybe his other leg is all the way over here. He's got some good grip on the cherries. And we'll do the other part of the beak here. He's already bitten into a cherry here. Let's go with a bigger brush. We'll go and get that white for a bit of a highlight there. Nice. And give them some little eyes. Maybe some reflections in their eyes. I think this guy just needs to have a bit more beak. Yeah, that's better. Okay, in our last minute, I don't think we, we really want to do another 
bird here. Maybe we'll just clean up. Oops. Maybe we'll just clean up the birds a little better. Give them a bit more feathery or pointed tail. Nice. We'll just add maybe a bit of texture to the wings. Alright, and then we can maybe go back to the cake. Just show the icing dripping off a bit more clearly. Don't know that that's really what that effect is, but hey, it's adding a bit of texture, which is no bad thing. Alright, there we go. Full 10 minutes. And that's something very different. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty pleased with the result. It was something new, something to try, had an idea, put it on the canvas. And that's what it's about, using your imagination. Or just caption something. It's always good to caption some stuff as you go. All right, let's do this. Some narwhals swimming in the ocean. There's some fun stuff you can do with an ocean scene. I'm going to find a few references. This is not a bad reference. But what I want to do is make the water nice and dark. We're going to do the silhouette of these narwhals. I'm going to start here. This is going to be quite a big narwhal in the foreground. He's just going to be doing his thing here. Maybe even bigger. There we go. Can't even see his tail. It's alright. We'll get a bit more of a detailed one going on in a moment. That's a bit close to the face, I think. Just a bit of fin there. comes to quite a definitive point, doesn't it, in that reference. So we'll clean that up a little. Now, there's a bit of a, a tube. <laughs> I don't know. A bit of... I, I don't know what you'd call it, even. That'd be horn or... I don't even know what it is, really. Is it a tooth? That comes out of... There. Something like that. And then we'll do another one off here in the distance. Really, the bottom of the narwhal is about here, isn't it? Maybe his body ends about there. All right. This tail's going to be cut off a bit again, but that's absolutely fine. Then he'll just have a bit of a nub here to show he's got that fin. Then we want to be reasonably specific with this horn. Again, I don't know exactly what it is. We'll do something like that. I'll just fill that in. Now we've shown our narwhals 
I think I want to get a better sense of the ocean. And I'm going to see what it would look like with a blue background. That's not blue. That's blue. The reason I like using a darker background is that this lets us use this blue, which is actually quite light for a dark blue, to really highlight bits and pieces in the ocean. This will be the top of the ocean. We've got a bit of surf that we can see from underneath. Maybe we've got some rays of sunlight coming down with this colour. Maybe they're getting obscured by the narwhals. Maybe we can also add in a bit of yellow, just a bit, just to emphasize that, those rays. Maybe we even want them in a bit, some bits in thicker color. It's not really a color, is it? But that's okay. Maybe even in this light gray. Nope, don't want to cover up that narwhal's horn. And then again in this light blue. Would have been a good idea to do this earlier on so that we don't have to worry about overlapping the narwhals themselves. But that's all right. Now we'll just do a bit of blending here with that small brush. All right. And I think we just want to show that this is light, so we're going to blend that in a little as well. Still a bit more of a solid chunk than we had with the more stringy ones, but still we don't want it to be solid completely. We'll blend that a little better. I don't know, you can do whatever takes your fancy. So I'm trying some new things out today. I haven't really done a lot of before. To mixed results, I think it's fair to say. We'll have a couple of fish swimming around here. Maybe, maybe in black as well. Just the outlines of the fish. And it may well be worth doing different things. We can check once again what that blue background will look like. You know, I think I'm pretty set on that grey. But in this light blue, maybe we'll have some bubbles coming up from somewhere. It's always good to help emphasise the underwater nature of this scene. And uh, maybe we can try, and we can take this back if we don't like it, but we can try blending the narwhal in with the water a bit. Just to get the, uh, the impression that you're not seeing everything. And I actually quite like that personally. 
So I'm going to stick with that. There's a bit of mystery in there, isn't there? I don't know. It's nice to uh, try something different. I've only got a minute left. That's all right. We might just do another narwhal in the background. Just a small fella. Just like this. We'll go in a bit closer. Really neaten that up a little bit. Just needing up this horn. All right. There's plenty we can do here. Our last few seconds, and there we go. Narwhals, narwhals swimming in the ocean. You know, I'll say about today that I haven't done my favourite drawings. I think I've done better drawings before, but that said, we've tried new stuff. And that's really the important thing. It's always important to try something new. If we don't do that, we don't improve. So thank you for coming on this journey with me. I'll see you next time.